Hey, fourth graders. All right, so we've talked about mental math strategies and we've talked about estimation with addition and subtraction. So now we're going to move into the actual process of finding the, the sum and the difference for addition and subtraction problems. This video is going to cover three of your lessons. It's going to cover your lesson on adding whole numbers, your lesson on subtracting whole numbers, and your lesson on, lesson on subtracting across zeros. We're going to go over all three of those skills in this one video. All right, so after you watch this video, you'll be ready to do those next three lessons. And um, again, you can do them as many of them in one day as you want, or if you want to spread them out over a couple of days, that's up to you and your learning coach. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, again, I have my grid paper just to help keep things lined up. Sometimes seeing those horizontal lines is really helpful um, in making sure your numbers are lined up. That is one strategy or one mistake that I see students make a lot is just not lining their numbers up properly. We also want to make sure that we are um, using appropriate regrouping strategies if that's the way that you're choosing to add or subtract. And um, again, we also want to make sure that we're writing the numbers down correctly from the problem and that we're following all of the directions that the problem gives. So if the problem tells you to estimate and then add, that's what it wants you to do two things estimate first and then add remember estimating is something that you can do pretty easily in your head all right so it's not necessarily something that you have to write out but you will see questions that ask you how can what is the estimate and how can your estimate help you to determine whether or not your answer is correct so we're going to go over that all right so i have let's say um 419,387 plus 342,516. All right, that's what I'm adding. All right, again, I'm finding the sum, which is the answer to addition. I'm gonna estimate first because that is what your books and your lessons tell you to do, estimate and then add. So I'm gonna estimate first. And when I estimate, I generally like to round to the nearest, the, the highest place or the next highest place, all right? Because if I'm rounding all the way back here, I'm really doing a whole lot of work to estimate that I don't necessarily need to do. All right, so I'm gonna round to either the nearest hundred thousands place or to the nearest 10 thousands place. It's not right or wrong to choose one or the other, whichever one works best for you. Hundred thousands place is gonna be much easier for mental math. 10 thousands place is gonna give you a more accurate estimate. So it's kind of up to you which one you wanna do. I'm gonna go with hundred thousands. All right, so this one tells the four to stay a four. So I have 400,000. And then that four tells the three to stay a three plus 300,000. I'm writing it out so you can see it. You can also just do this in your head. All right, well, four plus three is seven. The rest of this is zeros. So there we have it. All right, 700,000. All right, now my answer should be close to 700,000. So that's how my estimate can help us. If my answer is close to my estimate, then I know that my answer is more likely to be correct. All right, so now I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna add. Remember when we're adding with regrouping, you always wanna start with your lowest place value and then regroup, carry over the, um, the tens or the hundreds or whatever to the next column. Okay, so seven plus six is 13, write my three, regroup my one, one plus eight is nine, plus one more is 10, write my zero, regroup my one, one plus three is four, four plus five is nine. Okay, bring down my comma. 9 plus 2 is 11, regroup my 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 4 is 6, and um, 4 plus 3 is 7. So I got 761,903. Now remember, when I estimated, I rounded to the nearest hundred thousands place. It's going to be my least accurate estimate, but 761,000 is pretty close to 700,000. That's not that much over. So I can say my answer is more likely to be correct because my estimate is not that far off from my answer. If my estimate, let's say, was 900,000, then I got 761,000. Well, that's pretty far away. But it is within 100,000 of my estimate, so I'm probably right, okay? That's, that's how we're using our estimate to check our answer. Okay. So you notice when I did this, I regrouped. And now one thing I did not do is I did not pull out my phone and use the handy dandy calculator on it. We don't use calculators in fourth grade. 
calculators are valid. They're a tool that we can use, but you need to know the actual process of adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So we will not be using calculators at all this school year, okay? If you choose to pull out a calculator to check your answers on your classwork, that's fine, but if you are using a calculator on a quiz or a test, that's actually cheating, all right? You're not allowed to use a calculator. You will not be given access to a calculator during FSA. So if you don't know how to add, subtract, multiply, or divide without a calculator, now's the time to put that calculator away and practice. And actually, the person who I would like to be using the calculator, if anybody's using it at all, would be your learning coach to check your work, not you. Okay, because I want I don't want that to become a crutch. And I've seen that happen with students where they're like, they're using a calculator and um, and then all of a sudden they don't know how to do it without a calculator. We don't want to get stuck with that in that situation. You can't use a calculator when you're taking your benchmark assessments. You are not supposed to be using a calculator for any of your schoolwork at all. Um, no, none of your quizzes, none of your tests. And for sure, you're not going to be allowed to use one for FSA. All right. So there we go, we've used our estimate and that's helped us to check our answer. Right now, um, let's go ahead and move on to subtraction. Addition, I think is something that's pretty easy for most students. Most students understand the process. If you have to use your fingers when you're adding or subtracting, use them. You can use your fingers. You can't use a calculator, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's move on to subtraction. Now we're finding the difference. Remember, the difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. Um, and I'm going to do um, 536,381 minus 258,419. Um, All right. When I'm subtracting, remember, you cannot, if the bigger, the top number is smaller, you have to regroup, right? That's the strategy that we're using. So if I have 1 minus 9, the answer is not 8. That's a, if I have one, I can't take nine away from it, right? Remember, that's what we're doing when we're subtracting. We're taking away from it. I only have one apple. I can't take nine apples away, all right? So I have to go next door and borrow some more. All right, so one minus nine, I can't do. I have um, one teacher I used to teach with said, if there's more on the floor, you have to go next door and borrow some more. So that's kind of a little rhyme to help you remember that. All right, I'm gonna make that nine, or sorry, make that eight into a seven. and I'm going to add a 10 here, so that's, oops, sorry, I said 10, so I wrote 10. So I have 11. Now I'm doing 11 minus 9, all right? I can use my fingers to help me out. 9, 10, 11, all right? So that's 2. 7 minus 1, I can do that one. That one is 6, all right? 3 minus 4, nope, have to go next door. That one comes a 5. This becomes a 13, all right? I'm going to go from 4 to 13, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, I got 9. I'm just showing you how to use your fingers to do your math if you need to and showing you that it's okay to use your fingers, all right? Um, now I'm going next door, all right? I have 5 minus 8. Nope, can't do that, so that has to become a 2. This becomes a 15. All right, eight, a 15 minus 8 is 7. All right, that time I did it without my fingers. Now I have two minus five. Nope, can't do that. So I have to go and borrow some more. All right, so that becomes a four and that becomes a 12. All right, 12 minus five. Oh, I don't remember what that equals. So I'm gonna go five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 equals seven. All right, and four minus two is two. So I got 277,462. That was my difference that I found. The best way to check your subtraction is to use what's called an inverse operation and add. Because when you learned about fact families, you learned addition and subtraction are opposites of each other. That means that they are inverse operations. So to check subtraction, I can actually use addition. And I always recommend that you use addition to check your subtraction. Addition is easier than subtraction. And you tend to make less mistakes when you add than you do when you subtract. I see a lot of students regroup incorrectly with subtraction. And you would catch that if you added to check your answer, but you might not catch it if you don't. It takes just a minute more to go ahead and, and add these two numbers together and see if you get this, and then you know you have the right answer, as opposed to, well, I hope I have the right answer, right? So I'm gonna use the inverse operation. I'm gonna do 277,962 plus 258,419, all right? 
And here I have 2 plus 9 is 11. Write my 1, regroup my 1. 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 1 more is 8. 9 plus 4 is 13. Regroup my 1, bring down my comma. 1 plus 7 is 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. Write my 1, regroup my 1. 1 plus 7 is 8. 8 plus 5, ooh, I don't remember 8 plus 5. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, write my 1, or sorry, write my 3, regroup my 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. So I got 536,381, and I started with 536,381. So check, that one is correct. All right, I know I'm right because I just checked my work. If I got something different when I add it, I would want to go back through and double check, especially where my regrouping is, to make sure I've regrouped correctly. Okay, so it, using that inverse operation of addition is a really great way for you to double check and make sure that you have subtracted correctly, and I recommend that you do that every single time. All right. One last problem, and then we're going to wrap this video up. We're going to subtract across zeros. This seems to be the most difficult thing for students, and I want to show you my strategy that I use to subtract across zeros, and I find this to be very effective with most students with it, when it comes to subtracting across zeros. Okay, so I'm going to go with a little bit smaller numbers. I'm going to say 6,000 minus 400, or sorry, 4,000, Oh my word, I'm writing different numbers than I'm saying. 397, 4,397. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Maybe I need some more coffee this morning. All right, so I'm going to subtract. Now I have zeros, and, and I think students get confused. Am I supposed to turn this into a 10? Am I supposed to turn this into a 9? What on earth do I do? Here is my strategy when it comes to zeros, especially if there's lots of zeros in a row like this. All right, you. right, I'm going to go all the way over to the neighbor who has something. Okay, it's like you're looking for some sugar, right? And you go next door to your neighbor and knock, knock, knock. Do you have any sugar? No, I'm sorry, I don't have any sugar. Well, you can't borrow sugar from them because they don't have any sugar. So you have to go next door to the next neighbor. Knock, knock, knock. Do you have any sugar? Nope, don't have any. So you're going to keep going until you find sugar. Okay, and then maybe you're like, hey, these other neighbors don't have any sugar either. So let's bring some sugar to everybody. Okay, that's kind of what you're doing here with the subtraction. All right, so right here, I automatically know I can't do 0 minus 7. I'm going to have to keep going. Oh, there's nothing there to borrow. I'm going to have to keep going. Oh, there's nothing there to borrow. I'm going to keep going. Oh, 6. I have something, all right? And so that 6 is going to become a 5. And then these two zeros turn into a 9. The only one you make a 10 is the 0 that you started with, okay? This is the 0 I started with, so that's the only one that's going to become a 10. The rest of my zeros become a 9, all right? So now I can go through and I can actually subtract the whole problem. So in a way, this is actually a little bit faster than doing this, where you have to go one at a time and, and do your regrouping that way, because you can do your full regrouping with zeros, all right? So now I have 10 minus 7, and that equals 3. I have 9 minus 9, well, that's 0. And I have 9 minus 3 is 6. I have 5 minus 4, that's 1. All right, so I got 1,603. As always, I'm going to use my inverse operation to add and make sure that I have the right answer. Because again, this is where I tend to make my most mistakes is with zeros, because zeros can be tricky. All right, 3 plus 7 is 10. Write my 0, regroup my 1. 1 plus 9 is 10. Write my 0, regroup my 1. 1 plus 6 is 7, 7 plus 3 is 10, write my 0, regroup my 1, so far I'm looking good because I have all zeros right here, bring down my comma, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 4 is 6, I got 6,000, I started with 6,000, so I'm correct. All right, let's do one more example of subtracting across zeros, this time I'm going to put the zeros in the middle of a number, it's still going to be the same strategy. Okay, so let's say I have um, 4,000 um, 9 minus um, 2,568. Okay, so again, I'm, I have some zeros in here, so I'm going to work on the subtracting across zero strategy. I have 9 minus 8, that equals 1. Oh, I can't do this, so I have to go next door and borrow some more. Nope, nothing there. I'm going to go all the way till I find something. 
So I'm going to the, the number, the first number I get to that doesn't have a zero. All right, that one goes down. This zero turns into a nine. The zero I start with becomes a 10. Remember, the only zero that turns into a 10 is the zero you start with, okay? 10 minus six equals four. Nine minus five equals four. And three minus two equals one. So I got 1,441. I'm gonna do some my inverse operation to double check and make sure I have the right answer. All right, eight plus, um, one plus eight is nine, four plus six is 10, we group by one, one plus four is five, five plus five is 10, we group by one, one plus one is two, plus two more is four, 4,009, 4009. All right, so there we have it. We have our addition. Remember, we used estimation to see, you know, um, if we think that our answer is close or not. Um, with subtraction, we use our inverse operations to double check our answers. And when we're subtracting across zeros, remember you go all the way over to the, the number that's not a zero, and then every zero turns into a nine, except the zero you start with, that one becomes a 10. All right. So there we have it that, like I said, this video covers three of your lessons, adding whole numbers, subtracting whole numbers and subtracting across zeros. And that pretty much wraps up your um, unit on addition and subtraction. If you need any other help, please let your math teacher know and have a great day, guys. Bye.